episode three of Lefty Cards here with Turner Schaus. We are here April 3rd, or actually, it is April 4th today, but you will hear this recording April 8th. I will be out of town at a wedding in LA and of Los Angeles on the sunny beaches. Um, and I will be airing this on the 8th, but I'll be in an airport where I can't communicate with you. So we were recording it four days early, but I've got my man Turner who has so graciously been able to come alongside me as in Turner, as you guys will all know him. So he has a face Turner Schaus in the flesh. Here he is everyone. Uh, I love him. I'm sure you'll love him, but Turner, Welcome to episode three of Lefty Cards, my friend. We are part of the NoOffSeason.com sports card network. Check out LeftyCards.com for more of our content. And then, by the way, I just have to say, because I love NoOffSeason.com so much and because they've done so much for me, a free 30-day trial membership at NoOffSeason.com gives you Friday edition of the sports card strategy show called The Overflow Show. It's a premium podcast for members only every Friday, and you can ask an unlimited amount of questions to build your sports card investment portfolio. And if that's not enough reason for you to go sign up for a free 30-day trial, you get Sports Card Stool and a ton of premium members only articles if you sign up today at NoOffSeason.com. Paul has done a great job uh, uplifting me and my career, and Paul has done a great job creating great content. Connor and and the guys there at Sports Card, uh, the Sports Card Strategy Show and NoOffSeason.com are just, I can't tell you enough how critical they are for my own personal development and for your personal development of your sports cards and of your portfolio. So please go check them out at NoOffSeason.com. And in Turner, how are you, my friend? And how are uh, how is the recent card market for you, my friend? Doing good. Just a lot of buying right now for me because I'm. I mean, it's football buying season. Like, like I pay attention to you, Paul, Connor, all of them. I mean, I'm an avid watcher. I mean, I do a lot of listening while I try to lift or shoot basketball, just because I'm a college athlete. I mean, I go to Asbury University, played Division three basketball there, so. I uh, I listen to like every podcast basically, so I'm I'm doing a lot of buying with a lot of quarterbacks and even even a little bit of baseball here and there, but just because it's not really basketball buying season, so I've got to hold off on those. But card card markets treat me good right now. I'm I mean life's treat me good right now. I'm doing good. Nice, nice. So mixed in there, you said you are buying quarterbacks and baseball where it's where it's applicable. Yes, sir. And so. Uh, I guess we'll get to your card buys here in a little bit, but I just wanted to know, we always ask our guests um, or the co-hosts at the Lefty Card Show what a favorite recent card story is. And I told you, I kind of teed you up before we started that you were going to have this. And you said you had one from your childhood. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm 20 years old. So, I mean, I, I make everybody feel a little older um, with any certain, any situation, but so whenever I was probably in, in like elementary and middle school, I mean, I, I've always like grown up around basketball cards and stuff. Like me and my dad used to collect like some of the nineties, you know, with Michael Jordan and my dad was a big Rex Chapman fan. That's a, it's an underrated one with us being from Kentucky. Yeah. But, um, whenever it comes to sports cards in, in my neighborhood, um, we had like the neighborhood yard sales, you know, how everybody does. So I buy a buy a baggie of a uh, baggie of basketball cards, just like five dollars. So I was stoked about that. I saw like a Scottie Pippen in the front, and I thought it was just going to be some you know throwback ones. Well, in that bag is one of the try try cards of, from 2003, and it's uh, pretty sure it was upper deck of LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Bosh. It's one of wow. the tear, tear apart ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. I made sure not to tear it apart because, you know, you got to keep all three. Smart. But, um, but yeah, I, that was like in like the big pile like this. It was probably in the middle. I, I start freaking out. My dad starts freaking out. I mean, we got a little grail on the card, but I mean, that was a that was a nice little story. With that. That's sick. So which card is it? The 2003? I'm um, pretty sure it's upper deck, but I could be wrong. Um, it's a uh, it's one of like the cardboard tear tear apart cards with uh it might be Upper Deck X, SBX, but I could be 
I could be off of that, but um, but yeah, I mean it's a it's a rookie card of uh, LeBron, Carmelo, and Chris Bosh. That's awesome, dude. Are you ever going to grade that? No, it's not gradable. It's Probably. just terrible. It, it, the corners are a little bent. Like, I mean, it's got a little scratch in the back. Like, it's, I mean, it was is, it, is this it? Is this the one? Yes, sir. That's the one. Hey, hey. There we go. So, 2003 Tops Rookie Matrix Chris Bosch, Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James. Yep. And that happened to be in a $5 baggie. Nice, man. Nice. Yeah. So that's looking pretty good for you, <laughs> considering the opening bid on this is fifty dollars. Uh, there's some graded ones. Let's see. Uh, let's see what the, if we have any that are sold. Okay, so this was a PSA eight that was sold for about thirty five dollars. So you're saying raw value on this is around a PSA eight thirty five dollars. Yeah. So it's not. But it's not even more than that though. Like, how cool is it that you were able to pull a card like that and get an emotional like. Right. Emotional moment with Pops, with Papa Shouse. Shout yeah. out, shout out to Papa Shouse as he was a former employer of mine. That's how I met Turner. Mm -hmm. uh, man, I just um, got a lot of respect for the Shouse family. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's a sweet story. Thanks. And it, I mean, these peel away cards too, like the 2004 Tops Matrix, that's like a throwback to the Magic and uh, Magic Bird. Uh, um, Dr. J. Yeah, Dr. J. Tearaway. That's like super, super expensive. So, yeah. Um, and that's like one of Paul's favorite cards. Like mm -hmm. when he talks about Grail cards, you know, he doesn't have a whole lot of cards that he likes that he would actually buy. You know, he, he's commonly talking about investment first and portfolio last. <laughs> um, and so, but I remember one time we were at the National Card Show and there was a PSA ten of that that was worth like. I don't know, stupid money. And I was like, and he was like, dude, look at this, look at this, look at this. And I was like, hey, I asked the guy behind the counter, I was like, can we just take a picture with this? This is like a grail card for him. He can't afford it, but a picture would be great. And the guy was like, oh, of course. So I have this picture of me and Paul at the first national we went to together. And uh, he's holding his grail card, which is the triple tear away of Magic Bird and Dr. J. So that's awesome yeah so man that's a good that's a cool story cool story all right uh so you're buying and selling we've talked about this already but you've got some quarterbacks you've got some baseball players um and then also on our show are you buying and selling any guys that you're not already put in the show notes this is something we're going a little off the, off the rails here so who who are you buying cards of right now so what I've been doing, and I actually just got a submission in pretty recently, is I've, I've I mean, and I've talked about this with you off the show with a lot of the Panini Instant Wemby cards. Yeah. Along with some NBA Hoops uh, Wemby cards that I will get like kind of on the cheaper end. And then I'll go submit it to SGC because the with the Instant cards, they'd be around $5 a piece. Like once, like you get the bulk of them, like probably like 15, 20 cards. And then the NBA hoops, I got like six of them for like $40 or something like that. And so I've been doing that a couple of times where I'll get like a good amount of them and submit them to SGC. And I mean, it'll be probably like 20, $25 a card to submit. And then it'll sell for around like 45, $50. And nice. you know, that up if you got 20 to 25. So. <laughs> Yeah, I I just got a uh, I think it was a twenty eight card submission back. I I got I think like fourteen tens in there, which you know with Panini Instant, I mean that you, you take that because of the little duct tape on the or Scotch tape. Oh yeah, comes on the top. How Stupid they Stupid Scotch tape. How they how they handle it is a little iffy at times, but uh, I yeah. still try to test test it, see how I do with it, and I mean that that gets me a little bankroll to invest, you know. Like yeah. quarterbacks or baseball or baseball players. Yeah. One thing that I'll tell everybody in the audience for is Turner is the key of finding like Turner is the guy for finding like small market bangers where you're just like <laughs> you'll text me and be like, hey, like, what about this card? It's five dollars. I think I could sell it for nine. And I was like, <laughs> Go for it, dude. And you've been turning really nice profits over the last year. Um, and so I think a lot of times we get stuck in like the 
uh, like guys like me forget what it's like when you're first starting a portfolio and you've got five to nine dollar cards and then you get to a place where you're able to flip sale and trade 500 to a thousand dollar cards and you kind of forget what that early point was like about taking um a a, a a refractor chrome first of a player and then selling it for twenty dollars when you bought it for six you know like in that like flip trading is how i got to where i'm at now with a portfolio you know about the size like 10 to 12 um grand at one point and not that i'm trying to say like oh i'm above this i'm just saying like i forget what that's like and then like something that you're great at is you're just still crushing those like you're just still like yeah dude well i'm just gonna keep banging them out because eventually you know i'll just i'll keep winning and yeah, exactly. if i keep winning dude then i keep winning Mm -hmm. so i just want to uh gas you up a little bit and say yeah, audience like if you guys follow uh turner on instagram or wherever else i'm sure we'll get your handles out here at the end but uh this guy's the king of man just turning cards for real so um turner has when did we start doing cards together i think it was around a year probably if about I, a year ago yeah, i think so around then because um it's whenever i mean it was around baseball season. I remember that because uh, and you referred me to the uh, to the show that you and Paul had, which at the time you all were dividing. Like, I mean, you also had the sports card strategy show that would come on on Mondays. But then some days you'd have the uh, like the baseball only like podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So you you sent me a link to one of those. And so I listened to it. And I kind of like to like rent some notes and even like looked on eBay and stuff. And uh, I mean, just hit the ground running with like listening to all strategy shows and then like i mean then buying the players that like i mean you and paul would recommend especially for because like i said it's baseball season so i mean that's where i benefited a lot at first because i mean me and you talked about it like last month how like my first like psa submission like i mean it did pretty well with like and it was all the cards that you were talking about i mean it wasn't like it wasn't all those because i like I couldn't really afford those, but I got like the lunar glows, the atomic refractors, just like regular refractors. I mean, and I still benefited big from those PSA tens. Yeah. Yeah. I've been super proud of you, man. I think you've done a great job. Um, and so anything on your current buy and selling list is probably going to do really well as, as well. And, uh, so. you know, Turner's on the same path as me trying to, just make a ton of money in sports cars so we can support our families and, exactly. uh, and, and uh, or future families. Um, and so we, uh, we love having that like lineage in sports cards, man. It's love. It's love. It is a loving environment when you're able to hand off a passion and do it with someone else. And because I've known you since you were in like sixth grade or something, it's just cool yeah. uh, to be able to do this together. So, well, um, one way, one place where you can find the cards that Turner's talking about is whatnot. And we love to talk about whatnot at whatnot. You can get $15 on whatnot by joining through whatnot.sportscardstrategy.com. And we would love for you guys to go out there. We've done some shows out there. We've done some shows on whatnot where we were um, selling. We we're talking about the Wimby game and stuff like that. We love uh, to use that platform. So get $15 on whatnot by joining through our link at whatnot.sportscardstrategy.com. Um, and then if, if you want to do the, 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 um, the, the permanent uh, card shop route, Graybo's, you get 10% off of any purchase at graybos.com by using the promo code strategy 2023. If you're out there in North Carolina, you want to hang out with the Graybo dudes. They are a fun group of people. Definitely go check out Graybos. And Denny one time has been on our show several times um, or the sports card strategy show several times. Love uh, Duke over there at Graybos, all those guys. And uh, they just got on Fanatics Live. So you can also um, go purchase some stuff from them there. So whatnot in Graybos. You can get 10% off at Graybos by using the sports card strategy show promo code called strategy 2023 and at whatnot get fifteen dollars off uh by joining through whatnot.sportscardstrategyshow.com 
All right, Turner, we're going to go to our segment that I have grown to really love in our in our three episodes um, called Deep Cuts. We like these deep cuts as we are able to we all know the big names in every sport. And sometimes we do pull around these big names in the deep cuts. But sometimes there's just another layer under the obvious. And um, I always like to I, I mean. This is how it's turned out for the last three episodes that the guest has talked about basketball and football. Um, but we like to talk about the four major card sports, the basketball, football, baseball, and soccer. Um, and so you've got some very interesting ones here in the playlist here that I'm looking at. So I would love for you to start off your deep cuts and give us that in Turner gold. So the first one I have is with football, and I have Brock Bowers. So I know that's a more popular name than some people would think, even like with prospects. But with him injuring his ankle and even with him not being a wide receiver, quarterback, or uh, or offensive lineman, that the media is not going to show as much attention because, I mean, there are like four or five quarterbacks that are mainly getting all the attention. I mean, he was a Heisman candidate before yeah. he injured his ankle. Um, I'm reading his 2023 stats from ESPN. I mean, he had 56 receptions for 714 yards and six touchdowns in the 10 games he played. And even before that, I mean, 2021, he had 56 receptions for 882 yards with 13 touchdowns. And in 2022, it was 63 receptions for 942 yards and seven touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, he's consistently proved that he's he is one of the most – dominant tight ends in college football. I mean, he won two championships with yeah. Jordan. I mean, that shows dominance right there. And the fact that not many like media outlets are talking about him still, I mean, makes him like a deep, deep cut in my opinion, at least. Oh yeah. That <laughs> when you just go to a tight end at all, that's already a deep cut. And right. then when you go to a college tight end, it's like, oh, okay. And then you're coming off of an injured tight end. You're like, dang, this is a deep cut. So, yeah. Turner, do you have any idea what like what his cards are going for right now? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Okay. And it what are like what are his markers for selling? I mean, I know, of course, he's got pretty much in 2022. He almost had a thousand yard season. Like that's yeah. he, he could come back and do that for Georgia. And he's got uh, 26 touchdowns to his name in, in Georgia or uh, in college football, and that's only going to grow. You expect that to be at least, at least 35. You know, he's at least going to get probably nine touchdowns next year. Um, they haven't figured out what they're doing with, um, shoot, the running back that transferred from Florida, uh, Etn. Yeah, Etn. They haven't figured. I I don't know if he's coming back or not. Like with all the news of. Right. what's going on in his personal life. So Brock Bowers might be the guy on this Georgia team. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. What are his selling markers? So I have two that I wrote down here. One of them is just the NFL draft in general. Uh, I mean, that can be an early one. Yeah. Um, like I've talked about before, media shines light on many quarterbacks alongside with wide receivers and linemen in the first round. So this guy's this guy's getting drafted this year. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I misspoke then. I was expecting him to go back to. Yeah, I, I read. I read some mock drafts where he like was going, but okay, okay, I cool. Mean, I, I could have been wrong, but I mean that's from what I read. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm probably wrong. Honestly, I'm. I'm actually football is my least studied sport, so I just get the general. Like, obviously, I know who Caleb Williams is, but right. like when you're diving deep like this, like I'm a little bit. I know who Brock Bowers is, but I wouldn't yeah. I couldn't tell you like what's going on in his personal life. So no, like with that too, like I mean, one of the reasons why I'm like almost it's almost like I'm assuming is because I don't know his name, but Georgia brought in another like beast tight end. Okay. Like six seven. And yeah. Just a tank. And so I mean Georgia Georgia's benefiting from a lot of transfers this year. Yeah. Football. <laughs> yeah. I but, can imagine. but yeah, so um early marker with Brock Bowers could be just the NFL draft where he gets drafted to because, like yeah. I said, guys like Caleb Williams, Drake May, uh, McCarthy, um, Penix, Bo Nix, like all those guys are getting a lot of light shine up upon them, along with like Malik Neighbors, Roman Dunze. And then you've got some linemen, like, I mean, 
the one top of my head is Joe Alt. Mm. That's who I think. I hope my Titans pick him up. But that's Titans, fan. Point. Titans fan over here. We're not going to hold that against you. Uh, hey, we, we might pick pick it up this year, but I mean, as long as yeah. we get some good line. So but, I believe I believe the new um, Georgia tight end is Benjamin Eurosec from uh, Stanford. He's coming in, so yeah, uh, looks pretty good. Yeah. And it does look like that Brock Bowers is going to enter the NFL draft. So yeah, um, you were right about that. I was wrong. I'm okay. I'm okay. I have an egg on my face. So so yeah. Brock Bowers tight end going to get him NFL draft. So if you're going to get him, the NFL draft is at the end of April. I believe it's April 24th. Um, and so you've got a couple of weeks to get in on some Brock Bowers and potentially make a good flip trade. Um, we would always recommend that you have your auctions ending on the NFL draft night. So that's, uh, well, if, you want, if you're doing a traditional auction, it would be seven days prior to the NFL draft. So it would be the 20, what's, um, yeah, <laughs> the 17th. 17th. Um, your April 17th, which is uh, by the time this airs, that would be nine days. So you need to jump on a Brock Bauer turn pretty quickly if you're going to do that. But uh, who's your basketball guy? Let's go ahead and jump on to basketball. So my basketball guy is Dalton Connect. He's another like prospect who is going to be in another draft with the NBA draft in the summer. Okay. Um, and I got to see a lot of Dalton Connect because with me being a Kentucky Wildcats fan, like Dalton Connect was a hooper in the SEC. Yeah. This year. He averaged 21.7 points per game on 45.8% field goal. And some of his stats included he had six 35 plus point games, along with eight 30 plus point games in that. I mean, and all of the scoring is not just meeting the stats. I mean, he led Tennessee to the lead eight, and they had a battle with Purdue. I think it was yeah. last Saturday, last Sunday, something like that. Uh-huh. Um, I love his game. Just, I mean, with me being a basketball fan and like observing the game just from like a basketball mind, I mean, he does all the right things. I mean, he, he can score at all three levels. I mean, he's athletic and can finish at the rim. I mean, he, he can finish off two, finish off one, whatever you need. He can pull up and shoot the mid range jumper or just catch and shoot with that, just coming off screens. And then he knocks down threes in a consistent rate, whether that be pull up threes or catch and shoot. His uh, three-point percentage is just under 40%. Um, yeah, so with that, uh, Dalton Connects, uh, Markers, there's two in here. Um, his stellar play has helped him bump up in the NBA draft. Um, the recent uh, mock draft that I saw from, uh, pretty sure it was either Bleacher Report or ESPN, had him as projected eighth. And so with that, I mean, if people, like, see his name, I mean, they could – go buy his cards immediately or after being drafted like i talked about with his great scoring ability whatever team he gets picked up to i mean he's definitely going to play summer league because he's not he's not wimpy i mean he's got to prove himself a little bit with the nba especially because he's a senior and you know with the nba they value a lot of like 18 19 year olds compared to 22 23 year olds so he's gonna have to prove himself so he's gonna have to go to the summer league and with this three-level scoring that I talked about, as long as he does what I – I mean, what should happen, then there are going to be some markers in there when he's going to have a big game or two in the summer league that he may have 40 in the summer league. Or he may just have 20, but it's a meaningful 20 and a win for the summer league team. So, I mean, and then pe- more people will see, like, okay, he's actually, like, meant for the league. It's not just that he was a college star. And then people will be more interested. Yeah. Yeah. His autos are going for around 105 to 120 dollars right now um, for a base auto. And that the card I'm looking at right now is Bowman University Chrome. Um, it's got him uh in his Tennessee uniform. Um, I'm pretty sure he did not start at Tennessee. I think he went to northern yeah. Colorado. Yes. Uh, if if I'm pulling that info correctly, that is from deep in the back of my brain. Uh, Actually, they, with that, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. He started, um, I want to say either junior college or NAIA before. Hey. Tran- I mean, and like he he did his thing there, 
and then played in Northern Colorado for two years and then to Tennessee. So, I mean, this shows that this guy is a grinder. Like he's, yeah, he's a grinder. He's been through the trenches basically. I mean, and he's, I mean, who does he remind you of in the NBA? Uh, I've told people Booker because, wow. Yeah. Because you serious. I'm, I'm serious. You're yeah. jumping to one of the best shooting guards in the league. I, I, guards can, now, I, I can, I can, with this is like the ceiling for, for connect is, I can Booker see is the ceiling. I, I think so. Wow. All I right. know I know it's bold, but that is bold. I mean, Booker, hey man, Booker, Turner, stick to your guns, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But yeah. uh I mean, like like I've talked about, like I mean, Booker is athletic and finish at the rim. Yeah. I mean, I know that's not what he's mainly known for, but that's not what Connect is known for, even though both of them can get up and dump the ball. Uh, sure. Yeah. And both of them can shoot from the mid-range. I mean, Booker is known for that a little bit i mean nice little pull up maybe a fade away yeah and both of them could shoot threes so i mean that's that's like the closest comparison that i can think of right and so so the so booker's um prism silvers i mean of course this is in his pro uni in his prism Mm -hmm. silver which will eventually be there probably um that card's going for about a thousand dollars psa 10 so i mean if this card is at 105 and it's the card that is the card to buy for him right now, um, it's probably going to go up, especially the further up he gets drafted. Pe- uh, there are there are a lot of people out there uninformed of this guy. And that's why it's a deep cut. So feel free to follow um, Turner into buying in on some Dalton. Feel free to buy in on some Brock. These are deep cuts, mind you. These are guys that are on the second, third, fourth layer of uh of where you like to be in terms of the cream of the crop but that's the point of this segment the point of this segment is to give you guys that are a little further down on people that are uneducated in that particular sport and somebody may have never even watched basketball and they're like who the heck is dalton and you're comparing him to devin booker you know so it's like that's a big that's a big ask so i would expect this guy's prices to rise especially when you can get his autos about 105 dollars um, over the past three days, and he is currently out of the tournament. So mm-hmm. it's pro- his prices are probably going to go down between now and the NBA draft, which is um, over in the next couple of months. So, well, let's move on to soccer. I want to very quickly touch on soccer because I ha- we have a lot to talk about later in this show about um, bas- or baseball, and then we're going to talk about some Caitlin Clark, like absolute oh. stunner Caitlin Clark. We're going to talk about her a little bit. But so I'm going to very quickly say my deep cut, and it's actually not even a deep cut. If I'm honest, somebody they should know who this guy is. But I'm just going to go ahead and give you a soccer guy, Garnacho. Like this dude is a baller. People um, have loved to hate him because he's an Argentine that uh, idolizes Ronaldo over, um, over, of course, Messi, his the guy that everybody likes in his nation. (laughs) Um, So. Garnacho is the guy that I would like to elevate here. And the card that I would like to look at is a Topps Chrome UEFA uh, auto. This particular one, I am currently um, a the highest bidder on, and it will be closed by the time this episode airs, so nobody can get after me. Uh, so maybe this is just how I'm going to do it from now on. So nobody outbids me on my card live on the show. But this Garnacho um, Topps Chrome UEFA is what I'm going after. It has a rookie card. It's him and his Manchester United kit, um, and it, it's just a it's a good looking card. So Garnacho is the guy that I'm looking after in the soccer department right now, um, and he's a big name. He's going to be playing for Argentina, so I'm not worried about him. Um, yeah, and he's a guy that is on a big club of Manchester United. People love to hate him, but he's still a big club. So Garnacho is the guy that I'm going after right now in the soccer realm. Let's move on to baseball. Because this is something I'm getting really excited about. As you guys know, the Bowman 24, uh, Bowman Baseball 24 is coming out. We have talked at length with who is coming out in that checklist already. But before we get to that, I saw an interesting article that I want to get to. And this is the MLB's, the MLB posted an article uh, that they said, oh shoot, hold on. Son of a gun. I just lost it. I got to bring it back up. Hold on. The MLB posted an article saying 
These were the top 10 guys that they like to promote in terms of the best power hitters prospects in the minor leagues. When I see an article like this, Turner, I say, bet, which of these guys do I not have their cards? Because there are other people out there reading this same article that are ill as they're as ill-informed or even more probably more ill-informed than I am about who these guys are. And they're like, okay, cool. These are the next guys. Who's number one? Junior Camonero. I are we already know Junior Camonero's autos, super, super expensive. Next one, James Wood. Great. I've got a James Wood PSA 10 right here. This refractor auto James Wood PSA 10. This is going to net me probably $800, $900 in a couple months when he makes the pros. Um, then we go down Kobe Mayo. Great. I've talked about him a ton. I actually have three Kobe Mayos for sale right now that are about $250 a piece for a Bowman Chrome 10 uh, base auto. Then, okay, here's where it's get interesting. Owen Casey. This is a guy I invested in two years ago because he's in the 2020 release. He's in the 2020 Bowman release. He's out here, and he's number four on this list. Listen to some of these other names. Xavier Isaac. We've talked about him at length. And then you got another guy that we don't talk about much. Lazaro Montez. His Bowman Cromados, they are out there. They're about $70. Basalo. He's a guy that we've been hot on recently. Walker Jenkins. We're going to talk about him in a second. Spencer Jones. Okay. We talked about him. And then Jackson Holiday. So it's like name, 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 name. Then you've got <laughs> name, 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 name. Owen Casey. Name, 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 name. Lazaro Montez. So what that means to me, Turner, is all right. So I went to Market Movers and I said, okay, what are the top six best buys? in this age group, in this article. So I got this mash of data that you're looking at now. For those of you that are listening, it's a uh, it's a cross shared data of th the last 365 days of La Montez, Wood, Basalo, S Spencer Jones, Kobe Mayo, and Owen Casey's Bowman Chrome Autos Raw. So if we go in the last 30 days, just for giggles, of course, Spencer Jones went electric during spring training. And so his, his autos are higher than everybody else's. Like all these guys are, with the exception of James Wood and Kobe Mayo, Owen Casey and Lazaro Montez and some and Basalo are all under a hundred dollars raw, and these guys are going to be the the greatest power hitters. I went out on a limb recently and said that Basalo is going to be the number one prospect, um, probably in the next couple of years or maybe in the next year or so. If Lazaro Montez and Owen Casey are also on this list with guys like Xavier Isaac, these are cards that I'm looking to scoop up. And so when we look at Owen Casey, I have two graded PSA 10 Owen Casey's out of 250 already, but I don't have any Lazaro Montez and I have a bunch of Samuel Basalo. So what that means to me is my deep cut of the week is this guy right here, Lazaro Montez. His Bowman Chrome autos currently are selling for around $75 and I will be investing in this guy boom there it is how was that turner that was that was perfect i mean i'm, I'm definitely gonna watch back and take notes just like i normally do <laughs> he's he like script 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 yeah let's say like slow down please yeah lazaro montez if you guys need to go back uh, the whole chapter about this was just Lamar Lazaro Montez is who i'm buying because he was the one out of the 10 that i either don't have or is not already incredibly expensive. So that means there's a buying opportunity because when I look at data like this, I always go through and I skim through it and I'm like, okay, which of these dudes is there a buying opportunity for because people don't know who he is and not as many people. I mean, he did, he was uh, one of the chases out of that 2023 Chrome list, but the 2023 Chrome list is actually always underbought because it's, it's in the later parts of the year. You know, Bowman baseball was bought in huge. It's usually international signings. So these guys are young. They're like way far from the majors, you know. So, but this 2023 Bowman Chrome prospect, Lazar Montez, $75 right now. I'm pretty sure that that was one of my favorite buys in the uh, section right now. So my deep cut for baseball is Lazaro Montez, especially in the past 365 days, his autos at one point were over $140 and now they are down to $75. I'm in, I'm in, I'm interested. So 
Speaking of 2020 or er, Bowman releases, you've got an exclusive for us. Well, not, it's not an exclusive, yeah, actually. It, yeah. it, you have some data that we've been talking about. And of course, this is Thursday, April 4th. And um, the release of Bowman is going to come out May 5th, I believe. Or the first week of May is projected when it's going to come out and hit the streets. So likely some of these autos will hit before then. But you want to talk about Bowman 24 a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I know it was kind of mentioned on the strategy show, I'm pretty sure, on last Monday. Yep. But I'm uh, emphasizing it again. So, I mean, I was scrolling through Instagram yesterday. I mean, you know how people do sometimes whenever they're bored. Yep. And uh, I saw Slab Stocks, which that's an account that I follow. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of car people. I mean, if, if you don't follow Slab Stocks, then I mean, I, I'd recommend it just because, you know, they provide yeah. data along with like great source of value. Yes. So I was looking at there and um, I saw like a thing about Dylan Cruz with Bowman. And so I, I started reading a little bit and showed that, uh, I mean, they looked at the checklist for Bowman and it says that his first cards, I mean, his first card in Bowman along with his autos are coming to Bowman 24. And so I sent you a screenshot of that and we looked into it. I mean, and it confirmed it that he's going to be in this set. That's, and uh, the new release is going to be on May 8th. So that's about a month from whenever this recording is. And um, the main question that like, I mean, it's like a hypothetical question or however you want to put it is what part of the deal with Panini was exclusive? I mean, that's what I like wanted to know because like you know we thought that dylan cruz was going to have exclusive rights to panini all the time with his autos and just cards in general we didn't think that he's going to be in bowman and then you see the announcement about this and it's like what part of that panini deal is exclusive so yeah i mean like you can even pull up a a I just pulled it up, this up. Panini America signs Dylan Cruz to multi-year agreement. One of baseball's top prospects and the latest star athlete to join Panini's roster. Panini America is the world's largest roster. Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Panini's partnership with Cruz, who helped lead LSU to the NCAA title in June, is a multi-year deal. He will initially be featured in Panini's 2023 Elite Edition Extra. So that's... Um, that's, uh, I believe, his USA kit in that one, including in packaging points of purchase materials. And then moving forward, we'll be showcased in additional Panini products. This is not Cruz's first appearance in Panini products as a member of Team USA. Cruz is an outfielder. Dylan is a great addition. Da -da 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 -da. So I don't know what happened there. And I just thought I was like, there's just no way this guy is going to forget this and and sign with Tops. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so. I'm willing to admit I'm not always the most informed guy on life, but I really thought Dylan Cruz was not going to be in this release. You send me this, and I'm like, wow. Well, first off, I thought Walker Jenkins was going to be the main chase in this product, which arguably I still think you could. it's 1A, 1B in this. Uh, but Dylan Cruz is much further along in terms of his runway is shorter to the pros, for sure. Um, and he's on a worse team, so he's going to get there faster. And so Dylan Cruz coming in to an auto because this set was largely going to be Walker Jenkins. That was what you're chasing. Now there's a couple of guys that we're going to talk about here in a minute that are two. Uh, we're going to talk about two other guys in this release outside of these two names, but these two names, Turner, Dylan Cruz, Walker Jenkins, that is a big enough product chase to make this product. Uh, one that's worth looking into a lot of times Bowman baseball is like one guy or one or two guys, a lot of, Excuse me. A lot of paper. It's usually the guys that are like second, third, fourth year in the minors, and they're just now getting their firsts out in the product. And so typically draft is the one that has all the expensive dudes. Bowman is Bowman Chrome is the one that has all international project or uh, prospects. And then Bowman baseball usually has two or three of the big chases. And that's typically how they do it. So with this now having Cruz autos and Walker Jenkins autos, this is a, a very good sign for the baseball 24 Bowman baseball 24 product just for in general, because we are now going to see a Washington Nationals Bowman first auto of Dylan Cruz. 
And I'm just really excited about that. You know, so it's like, um, we really wanted to see that. We wanted to see that. Now, Dylan Cruz, we, we've talked about, okay, so we're going, let me, let me just get off the Dylan Cruz thing for a second. Baseball, uh, Bowman Baseball 24 is coming out May 8th, is what you said. I think I said May 5th the first time, but it is scheduled oh, for May 8th. Um, and likely it'll, they'll mess up the date anyway. So it, you know, May 5th might actually be when it starts hitting eBay because they always hit a little bit early. Um, but Dylan Cruz and Walker Jenkins, the two biggest chases in this. The other two guys. So we were like, hey, what are two other guys that you're interested in? So I'm going a little bit deeper here. Let's go with Kyle Teal, the catcher for the Boston Red Sox, has had three years in the system. Um, I like Kyle Teal's uh, makeup. He's a 2023 junior am- or a June amateur draft. So he's he was drafted in 2023, but he's got he's done three levels here in 2023. He went to complex, high A, and double A, and crushed at all three of these levels. And when I look, I, I, I've talked a lot about uh, Let's Talk Wax and how they rank the uh, in in Premier Autos. They rank them one out of seven or one out of five or something like that. Um, Kyle has Kyle Teal ranked. Kyle at Let's Talk Wax has Kyle Teal ranked a 1.5. And he has Dylan Cruz at a one. And then he has uh, Walker, Walker Jenkins as an E, which is elite. So it's like. You're putting this guy almost in the same class as the other two. And then I saw a tweet by Aram Layton uh, at Just Baseball the other day, and he said the, the the Boston Red Sox get a lot of trouble a lot of times for getting things wrong, but they were doing something right when they looked at Kyle Teal and didn't make it too complicated, and they just went and got the University of Virginia product, and he's hit 407 his junior year in college, and now he's just raking at all three levels, and the Boston Red Sox finally have something that they can look forward to. So with Kyle Teal's Bowman First Autos coming out in this set, that's a good third set. That's a good third person in this set. And so they already you're already going to be able to chase the Nationals. You're already going to be able to chase the Twins because of Jenkins and Cruz. Red Sox are going to be a high-valued team in this product as well if you're going out there and breaking or something like that because Kyle Teal is going to be a guy that's going to be up in the system. He's ranked um, number 12th among NILB players on the juggernaut ranking system that, that Kyle has. Um, and he's just a lefty swinging catcher that is really good and he's already cracking through double a and he hit he had a 167 wrc plus 323 average and a under a 30 percent k rate uh, as a catcher that's good stuff right there so he's good defensively he's good offensively he's got the right stuff kyle teal gonna be a guy i'm looking after fourth guy on this list sebastian walcott not a guy with a first auto and this is an interesting one He has firsts that already have come out, but they were not autographed. And so Sebastian Walcott actually was who the Mets requested in the Scherzer trade to the Rangers last uh, last deadline. They ended up saying no. They went back to the Rangers and got Luis Angel Acuna instead. So Sebastian Walcott was their first ask, and he has been ripping in the minors. And he was a international prospect that was coming out. Um, he's very young, very talented, and his first auto will not have a Bowman first on it, as far as I know. Um, now they have done that where they've they've messed that up previously, so it could be in the future that they will mess it up. But Sebastian Walcott, even though it's not a first auto, um, it does not have a first logo. It will be his first auto in a Bowman set. So. That's another guy that I'm looking forward to. So the four guys that I think are good guys that I'm looking after, Dylan Cruz, obviously, Walker Jenkins, obviously, both of those guys, we've talked about how good they are. Um, Dylan Cruz did not get out of the gate as fast as Wyatt Langford did, and so he only rocked a 73 WRC plus in double A, but he had a 192 in single A. But double A is the is the marker where we really start to see professional hitting happen, and for him stumbling out of the gate, there i really would like to see him explode this year before i start putting massive money into dylan cruz i think i would still rather put my money into um walker jenkins or i mean 
I, I would still put my money in any of the other 10 guys we talked about earlier before Cruz. That's just how – that's me personally because I want to see it. I want to see his progression. So thanks, man. Thanks for bringing up Bowman24. Uh, love to have an opportunity to talk about that. Um, and where can you find all these awesome deals? You can find them at marketmovers.com. Actually, I think it's just marketmovers. Uh, dot sportscardinvestor.com but it is market movers save 20 percent after a free 14-day trial visit marketmoversapp.com and use the promo code no off season to get a 20 percent after off after a 14-day free trial and that's the best way to get data it's what i use it's what it's what paul uses it's how you get these beautiful looking charts like what I showed you earlier. You can compare the cards against each other. It's a beautiful way to use uh, data. It's a really easy way to make yourself a lot more successful in cards. So market movers, save 20%, free 14-day free trial, marketmoversapp.com. Use the code no off season. Turner, you are a college basketball player. We've talked about this. You're also a male. I don't know if people knew that by your voice, but you are a male. Hopefully. Then, yeah. Somebody is currently overturning the normal the normal market of college basketball. And her name is Caitlin Clark. She's amazing. She's doing things no one else has ever done. She's breaking records that have been long, long standing. She's breaking not only scoring records, she's breaking viewing records. She's mm-hmm. breaking viewing records of college men's games. She's breaking viewing women's records. She's breaking everything. She's gotten a $5 million offer to play for Ice Cube's Big Three Challenge. Caitlin Clark is doing things that's turning the sports world really on its head. We haven't seen something like this. What's your response as a college basketball player to what Kalen Clark is doing? And then I want to know what's your response to what Kalen Clark's doing um, in the card market. How do you think that will affect the card market? So the first question, I mean, I I think even though that college is a more of a team oriented game than high school and NBA you still look at the accolades that Caitlin Clark has and you can't ignore it whatsoever. I mean, that's what people look at the whole time. It's like, what record is she breaking tonight? And what record did she break last week? I mean, it seems like she's breaking a record every, every game that she's playing. Yeah. But with her just having a historic season in general, like more eyes are on her on her team because like, you know, people like to win this history. Like I, I know, for example, like last year, whenever LeBron, broke a Kareem's record. Yeah. Like that viewership had to have gone crazy. And it's just, I mean, if you're in person or like just watching it on TV, like I was. And so an example like that would have been when, uh, Caitlin Clark, uh, surpassed a pistol Pete's, uh, college scoring record. But with her success and her constant success, because she's led Iowa like long ways in the tournament, this past couple of years, it's not just this year. It's not just a fluke. With the success, like you talked about with the viewership, like they're gaining like a decent amount more views than some of the men's games. I mean, they probably a decent amount of the men's games. Yeah. Not saying that the men's games have fallen off, but the women are like finally getting the recognition that they deserve. Yeah. And one big example that I'd like want to talk about is more recently, whenever Iowa played LSU, for sure, is an Elite Eight matchup. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a whole lot of story with this because, one, I mean, you've got Angel Reese, who is player of the year. Like, I mean, and she's going to be a top 10 pick in the WNBA. Yeah. Two, LSU won the national championship last year. And three, they beat Iowa. And with all that, I mean, this was going to be like a huge matchup that everybody's looking forward to. You're either one way or the other. You are not in between for the most part. I mean, if you're a basketball fan in general. I mean, because some some people are just like, oh, I want to see a good game. Like, no, this is one of those. That 
you you either wanted LSU or you wanted Iowa. Yeah. And so with that championship rematch, those viewers that viewership went to the moon basically. Yeah. Twelve point three million viewers. There you go. With more. Now I'm reading this as a tweet from uh Joe Pompliano. Um so or uh, on X, excuse me. <laughs> um get it right. Yeah, get it right, dude. 12.3 million viewers last night for or at the time for Iowa and LSU's game had more viewers than <clears throat> any woman's college basketball game ever. The ever. 2000 ever, the 2023 NBA Finals, the 2023 World Series, the 2023 Orange Bowl, the 2023 Big 10 Championship, the 2023 Cotton Bowl, the 2023 Pac-12 viewers or Pac-12 Championship. The 2012 Big 12 Championship, the 2012 ACC Championship, the 2000, sorry, 2023 Big 12, 2023 Pac 12, 2023 ACC Championship, 2023 Peach Bowl, Thursday night football, I guess just in general, uh, every 2023 college football regular season game except Ohio State versus Michigan. That is nuts. 12.3 million viewers tuned into a girl, a, a women's basketball game. That would have been unheard of 10 years ago. Five years ago. I mean, it It would have been unheard of one last year, year ago. Yeah, last year. I mean, it's I mean, it's just like the buildup. Like, I mean, people saw that they were on that side of the bracket with each other, and they're like, I hope that they play each other. I mean, just because of like, I mean. It's a it it's rivalry with the fans, really. I mean, I mean the fans like last year, like I remember like I think like Angel Reese, like at the end of the game, like went past Caitlin Clark and I don't know if she did it to her or not, but like she went like this yeah. to her, like right in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pe- people took that personally and said, like, oh, that's so unsportsmanlike, and they they had their little comments and stuff, but I mean it was Angel Reese versus Caitlin Clark, two of the biggest names in women's college basketball this year. Yeah. And I mean, just them having a rematch against each other, I mean, is was gonna gain views. I mean, I knew it was a lot, but I didn't know it was 12 point something million. 12.3. And then in the next round, I mean, event eventually, I would assume we're probably gonna have UConn versus Iowa. I'm pretty sure that's next. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So UConn versus Iowa. That this is another great matchup. Yeah, we've got Kaylee Clark versus Paige Bukers, and Paige has uh, so a- Angel Reese has autos out there that are that are worth some money, mm-hmm. but she comes in third in 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 price, and Paige is in front of her, and Caitlin Clark is obviously leading the way in sports cards because Caitlin Clark's, I so they they've been printing. They they've ha- they have a um, Zach Eady Caitlin Clark dual auto out there somewhere that's coming out, and I, I believe it's on a Tops Now. Um, I think I think it was a limited print. Uh, the March Madness one, I'm pretty sure, is what it is. Yeah, yeah. The, the and I, I don't know what it's what the the amount that it's being paid for, but I'm sure it's ridiculous, much yeah. more than I ever want to pay for a Zach Eady auto. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, I do. I think he's going to be an absolute flop in the NBA, but that is another story. But. <laughs> besides the point back to girls basketball uh we're gonna have Paige versus caitlin in another marquee matchup turner this blew my mind this was a stat i read the other day at the time two or three days ago the men's final four ticket to the cheapest ticket or no maybe it was the average ticket was five hundred dollars five hundred something dollars the cheapest ticket for the girls final four was nine hundred dollars? It's twice as expensive to go watch Caitlin Clark and Paige Buker play each other than it is to go watch Zach Eady and any of the UConn boys play each other. You know, and then you got like that is insane. First off, like you could you could write it up to how the bracket on the men's side has played out this year that there's not like you know big names out there or whatever sure there is there is always big names out there but the biggest name in college basketball right now is caitlin clark and i don't think it's even freaking close 
So from a card perspective, Turner, five years down the road, but five, 10 years down the road, she's got a force auto. I think the forcer who's going to end up drafting her something. I don't know enough fever. about that fever. Think, yeah. So yeah. the fever end up drafting her, her rookie auto tops, rookie auto WNBA card or her Iowa Bowman university card autographed. Which one is the one people want? I think, I mean, he said five years down the line. I still feel like it's going to be the professional one because people are more attached to those. I mean, you see that with, uh, I mean, see that with a lot of call. I mean, of course, like we've talked about, you can't really compare Caitlin Clark to any other women's basketball player, but with the men, with the men's side, like if you compare, like, for example, like a prison auto or a contenders t- contenders ticket auto to a like a Bowman basketball uh, Bowman basketball auto auto. I mean, five years down the line, you're going to see that yeah, the Bowman one is still a good amount of money, but that professional one's just going through the roof. And I I mean, people are more attracted to see the professional jersey on there, and even though that she's a legend at Iowa. But I mean, just seeing that professional jersey on her with an auto, I mean, that's gonna that's gonna draw people to whip out their wallet and pay whatever they want yeah. to or need to. I think it's interesting because the prism, the the prism cards, the WNBA has the print license with Panini, mm-hmm. and Tops has her license in Iowa's uniform. Mm. So I think what we will end up seeing is there will be so many Caitlin Clark, Iowa ones out there, at least in the next till she's drafted. Right. There will be an, a surplus of, of Iowa autos that come out because tops is going to get their money's worth here. Tops is going to sell as many Iowa, uh, Caitlin Clark cards as they can. And they have been. And so it'll be interesting. I just think it'll be interesting. I think, if I'm an arguing man, which I guess I am because I'm on this show and I'm arguing with you about it, I think I'm taking the Iowa card long term. Yeah. Because unfortunately, I think her market drops off as soon as she gets to the WNBA. Viewership probably is right. just not the same. Yeah, you're probably right. And ESPN is not going to be covering her like they're covering her right now. Because when you're a rookie in the WNBA, you're not close to breaking records. You know, they might cover her in year three or four. You know, when Sabrina, they hadn't talked about her very much. And then all now she's she's done a lot in the WNBA. So now she's in the, the three point contest with Curry. Yeah. But we didn't see her auto just explode all over the place when she got to the WNBA. Right. So I don't know. I'm just interested to see will Caitlin Clark continue to transcend and continue to change the game? And will she continue to and, and, and that big three piece of it and all that kind of stuff? That's a big piece going forward of what her brand looks like. Mm-hmm. Because going forward, like we don't we don't really know how Caitlin Clark's gonna continue to change the game. So yeah. I mean, there's people that could that were that are saying that she could slot in for the Detroit Pistons right now. So it's like <laughs> I, I don't really I don't know if that is I'm not here to debate that, but what I'm saying is she's changing the game. Yeah. And I'm I here, think uh, I'm here yeah. to to be a part of that. I think one of the markers that uh that could cause her card her pro cards to go up is with the WNBA playoffs. Like, I mean, as long as her team, which it, it's most likely gonna be the fever. The fever have been terrible for a couple of years now, and they got a I think it's Aaliyah Boston from uh, South Carolina last year. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if they got uh, Ryan Howard from uh, from Kentucky the year before, but they've gotten like multiple. And she was a dog. Yeah. And she, they've gotten multiple first, first overall picks. It's kind of like, you know, how the Timberwolves did for a little bit yeah. with, whenever they could have had three. Two or three in a row with uh, 
I mean, well, they got they got Wiggins, remember, and they got Towns, two number one picks. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's higher than that. Yeah. But if Kayla Clark started going off in the playoffs and even could lead them to a WNBA Finals, her card market will go up because people will be like, "Oh, I remember how great she was in college, and now she's doing great in the WNBA again." Mm-hmm. Or I mean, in the WNBA now, like I, I mean, she's going to stay consistent. I mean, I'm, I've got to get her stuff. And so with that, I mean, that's the main thing I could see. It. Yeah. So Aaliyah Boston is on the Fever. Um, mm-hmm. They don't have um, the Kentucky girl that you were talking yeah, about. I, um, I but so. they, they do have they have a girl from Georgia named Maya Caldwell, and then they have Grace Berger also from Indiana. Um, but Aaliyah Boston is a forward center, and Kaylin Clark is obviously a point guard, uh, obviously shooting galore. So you got a strong center, you got a strong guard. That's a recipe for disaster for yeah. uh, for any other team out there. So obviously there's some super teams in the in the WNBA. Um, there there are uh, other incredible women who play in the WNBA that have been good for a long time. We cannot forget about the Candace Parkers of the world. Or right. the um, the Deladonna. I actually think she took a year off this year. But there's just a bunch of great athletes in the WNBA. Um, I respect a lot of what they do. I personally, I know this might surprise you, Turner. I I watch a decent amount of WNBA games yeah. because I, coming from a coaching background, the strategy of a WNBA game is so much more compelling to me than the strategy of an NBA game because the NBA game is all based off athleticism, right? But for the most part. And the WNBA, although athleticism is a big part of it, you can see schemes um, uh, much more continuously. Uh, so I think, yeah. The coaching element of it is so much more engaging in the WNBA, which as a former college basketball coach, uh, even as an assistant, I loved the aspect of the game where you can watch the strategy of how a basketball game plays out. So I do love the WNBA. I'm excited to watch Caitlin Clark in it, and uh, I'm excited to watch her and Aaliyah together. So. Caitlin Clark, let's jump to our second or our one of our last sections here called Reserve Drivers. Actually, this is interesting. Turner, I don't even know if you know this, but the reserve driver that you have up here is no other than Trey Lance. Trey Lance. Are you aware that Krim also talked about Trey Lance? Um, I, I knew that someone did, but I mean, I, I mean, of course, like I said, I've watched every episode and like take, take mental notes. And I was, I was trying, trying my hardest to think of reserve driver. And I, the first one that came to my head was trade lands. I'm like, I feel like someone's talking about it. It doesn't, it, honestly, to me, it's not, it doesn't matter to me that somebody else has referenced it, but I think it's interesting. Like, I'm not like, Oh, Turner, you, you just brought up somebody yeah, that we've already talked about. Hard I'm, time. I, what I'm saying is like, Maybe we got to pay attention if more than one sports card savvy investor is talking about Trey Lance. Give me your pitch. So um, I, I talked about the date on here um, just because, you know, people try to look at stats whenever it comes to even backup quarterbacks. Like, oh, did he play in the preseason? And Trey Lance got traded on August 26th to the Dallas Cowboys, but did not play a preseason game for them. I haven't tried to look that up to see, like, if he did. And, I mean, it was like Cooper Rush playing the preseason games. Um, so, looking back at his stats, like, from whenever he was healthy, because 2021 he was healthy, but 2022 he played, only played two games. But whenever he was healthy, he was not not a terrible player for the 49ers. Like, I mean, he was a decent, like, starting quarterback. I mean, he threw for 603 yards and five touchdowns with two interceptions in six games that he played. He also rushed 38 times for 168 yards and one rushing touchdown. Um, I mean, so that's a capable quarterback. The part that makes this a reserve driver and that he could bump up this year is a lot to do with other stuff behind the scenes. Such, I mean, a lot of it has to do with Dak Prescott. Yeah. I mean, Dak Prescott's been a solid quarterback in the regular season. I mean, he – I think they went like 10 and 4. Like I, I just need to know for the audience for, for the audience's sake, are you a Cowboys fan? I'm not. There we go. Okay. All right. Keep yeah. going. 
Yeah. You I mean, mean they already said, we right. already told we already told them about the Titans fan, but they just need to say they just needed yeah. to hear it. Yep. I'm, because I'm Krim not... is a Cowboys fan. Yeah. Yeah. Hearing so, hearing it from a non Cowboys fan hopefully makes it more a little more compelling. Right. So yeah, like I said, I'm a Titans fan, but a lot of the stuff with Dak Prescott has to do with like he he has good regular seasons and then gets gets the fans hopes up, gets the teams hopes up, and then chokes in the playoffs. Yeah, kind of like my Kentucky Wildcats with basketball this past couple of years. I I experienced the same thing with that, but I mean he has been losing the trust of fans and management. I mean, it's just such a roller coaster. Just like you see during the year, like, oh, like Dak's actually showing something. And then playoffs hit, he stinks again. And then it's like, oh, it's it's back to normal, Dak. And so, I mean, this could be the last chance for him. I mean, because, I mean, people say like the definition of insanity is seeing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I mean, and this could be the same. I mean, this could be the thing with Dak. Along with this, I mean, he's he's dealing with some legal issues behind the scenes. Yep. I mean, not really behind the scenes because every media outlet is talking about it <laughs> yep. with these serious accusations. So, I mean, that's another thing that they're like. I mean, that could be like the cherry on top, where it's like, all right, we're gonna we're done with you. Like, yep. you choking playoffs. I mean, don't don't perform well. You've lost the trust of all the fans and management, and then you're not being smart legally. I mean, that that's just a recipe for disaster. And so, I could see Trey Lance stepping right in and maybe leading them to a couple wins. I mean, the part that we, I mean, as with the sports card strategy show in general, talks about just like the opportunity for basically like the call up and that could be Trey Lance's call up. And that's whenever you sell and that whenever he gets that start, regardless of if he plays super well. And I mean, you can make your money. With that. There you go. So we're buying in on the idea of, of Trey Lance potentially being the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. And even if there's speculation in the water, that is enough to get people buying Trey Lance's cards, which once you buy the cards, they obviously go up. That's how it happens. So I, I like the idea, like the idea of your reserve driver and Crims being Trey Lance. Okay. Are you ready to start grading your cards? CGC cards is the perfect place to slab your favorite sports cards. From their crystal clear holders to their affordable pricing, CGC Cards is the perfect stop for the for your grading needs. Go to cgccards.com to start grading today. So with CGC coming out there, we love to get those in a... Um, we always talk about how that is one of the clearest slabs for some of your personal cards. Um, the investment is still with PSA, but CGC is one of a fabulous option to go if you're looking to display your cards because they are going to look crystal, crystal. So my friend, the last thing we're going to talk about is a segment that I really, we, I, we got about five minutes that I want you to talk about this, but Topps Chrome UFC buyback play. Topps Chrome UFC is something that I'm sure Krim is going to wet his pants when we start talking about it as he is the biggest UFC uh, guy that I know in terms of sports cards. But let's talk about it. You're going to have to carry us here because I don't know much about the UFC. But what do you got, Turner? Yeah, so I've been a UFC fan for about probably a year, year and a half now. And I've even texted you about, I mean. Yeah, you've texted you've texted me to text Krim. Right, exactly. That's what I was about to say. I mean, just seeing like what kind of plays with that. And so, like I've, been, like I've said before with the scrolling, like through Instagram or something like that, I saw that Topps Chrome – Kind of like how they did with the the MVP buyback for baseball that they do every year. Mm -hmm. You know, like the base is like twenty dollars, refractors forty, something like. I mean, stuff like that. They they're doing the same thing with these UFC cards, and so Topps Chrome UFC came out on March twentieth, and so they want to promote the product as much as possible. 
And with that, I mean, they are promoting this buyback. So UFC, just like kind of like if people know boxing, how boxing has cards, like, and that's like a certain amount of fighters will fight at certain times leading up to the main event. And so UFC 300 is the 300, 300th card of UFC. And they're always super big. Like, and so with that, UFC 300 is on April 13th. And Top Chrome is having a buyback for the main event and the main event fighters. And so that's Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill. Um, they're they're the main event in the light heavyweight. And, I mean, it'll be a big one. I'll be tuned in. I know that Graham will probably be tuned in. He will but, be. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going to be a big card regardless. Yeah. And so while looking at that, I mean, I know that there's not a play for this one because people already know about it. But the potential play that I, I think – that could happen is with future UFC cards with this top buyback program. I mean, may, maybe this is the only card that they do it for UFC 300 because 300 is supposed to be a big card, but maybe for like UFC 301, for example, that's the next one that's going to be in May. Maybe they have the two, two top fighters like in the main event of the night with that. And they have a buyback and people buy the cards now for around that maybe two to five dollar range and then they can flip it for 20 or in like ten dollar fractures flip it in 40 something like that there i mean it's just a potential play that's not guaranteed i mean it's not like i'm saying go ahead and do it but i mean but there could be speculation that tops in order to try to sell more cards sell more boxes sell more packs all that could offer this buyback program for every ufc event to try to sell as many cards as possible and I mean, then people will start buying. There you go. So UFC buyback program um, will be in play for tops. It's a, I believe it's it's a ploy to try to drum up some attention in the UFC world. And um, if anyone knows that better than Turner, it's going to be Chase Krim. So I'm expecting Chase Krim to come on and talk about the buyback program again um, in in the next week or two. But Turner, thanks for giving us a start here on the UFC talk. I'm sure we'll talk more UFC cards for those of you that are interested. Um, we haven't done any live chat love today because obviously we are not live. And so we will not be seeing your comments. Um, unfortunately, um, I, I believe I will be facilitating live the comments. So I'll be commenting back written live, but what I have said and what interner has said on this podcast is, is um uh we are recording this a couple days before the eighth when it is launching but lefty cards episode three officially in the books and as we've done in all the other episodes here we do we're gonna be jamming feeding the ducks see you later <laughs>